Right, I spent an hour with a file, filing the slot square. And I must admit it looks quite acceptable. It feels quite nice on the key there as it starts. I know the threads are good. I need to take some off. Right, I spent an hour with the file, filing the slot square. And I must admit it looks quite acceptable. It feels quite nice on the key there as it starts. I know the threads are good. I need to take some off. People tend to forget what you can actually achieve using a using a file and a little bit of time and patience. That's loosened off and it's still got a real good hold on the tape. With that. I've worked out how long it needs to be, roughly that length, which means this bit here is going to be waste. I don't just want to turn it off and scrap it because it is good material and there's an inch and a half of it left, so I'm going to part it off. I'm going to try parting it off under power, Find a little bit of experiment with different feed rates and speed rates. It seems to like what I've got to set out here. I get them slow up now. Right, I'm at the stage now 
we need to try and find that inside of there. There's definitely one in there, it's just a case of getting it out. I'm going to turn that down that length to that diameter, plus a little bit, just rough it out. Then I'll take this off, put the chuck on, because I need to set the taper up on the compound slide to cut the tape off of the AR40 coloured. Slowed things down a little bit or a lot. Taking a much heavier cut now. That's taking a hundred thou, hundred thou the same, no problem at all. There's a lot of metal to pull off this. I'd rather take a heavy cut slowly and make nice small chips, small to to swarf instead of horrible nasty stringy bastards. All the heat's coming off from the chips. Lovely blue colour. Before I take it off a spindle, I'm going to put a hole through it. The biggest AR40 colour I've got is 26mm, but I believe you can get a 30 So I'm going to put a 30mm hole through there. Start off in the centre drill as normal. Right, this is a nice 16.5mm drill, a brand new one. I did a giveaway on one of these two or three weeks ago. Somebody did give us two or three of them. That's the way a drill should cut. Right, this is a 28mm drill, so we'll slow things down considerably. Let's see how we'll get on with that. It should. It should do alright. This is the test bar which is going to be used for this week's giveaway. This is how I'm going to use it on this particular application. Simply mount it between centres like that. And this is really accurately grounded, it's as accurate as I'm ever going to need. It's ideal for checking run out and for checking tail stock setup. But what I'm going to use it for, I'm going to put a they are 40 Collet on there. And I'm going to use this. It's got a little bit of spring in the collet, it's got it loaded up, and I'm going to use this to set up the compound slide to cut the taper. Once again, we'll set the compound slide to the same angle as that, and that's going to cut a taper. This is going to be perfect. Not nowhere, not somewhere near, it's going to be absolutely perfect, otherwise, the, the collet chuck will not work. So I'm going to spend quite a bit of time setting this compound slide up to run to that angle. Right, the first thing I'm going to do to get it somewhere near, I've set the tool post level with the side of the compound slide. I'm simply going to touch that onto the collet like that, all the way down, and that's going to get us reasonably well set up. 
the point to, the point to start from. And it's a case of putting a clock here, John, travelling back and forward until you get it right. This DTI gauge is absolutely dead on centre height, that's quite important as well. And so our initial reading is 4 thou out. 4 thou on a taper is a mile away, that's a long way away. So it's a case now of tweaking and adjusting until we get that run absolutely parallel. I'll turn the camera off and play around with it. Once I get it somewhere near, I'll put the camera back on again. Right, I've spent about 20 minutes getting this set up. Bring it to a zero. That one. Right, wind us down. And that's going quarter of a thou one way and then quarter of a thou the other way which is considerably less than a funny's hair so I think that's well within tolerance I'll put the digital gear on and see what that says right, 20 inches we'll zero that turn it on zero it So that's actually five. I had this the last time I was playing with this. We've got tens, hundred, thousand, tens of thousand. So we're talking five tenths. Right, so zero there. Okay, so this part of the slide wants to come towards me, the funny's hair. In fact, less than the funny's hair, really. Right, I'll spend a little bit more time. Set a zero. Right, and that's probably as good as it's going to get. Less than a tenth of a thou end to end, which is not bad for a mechanic, it pisses about. Make sure the cross side is nice and tight. Yep, definitely settled for that. Right, we're all set up and start cutting this taper. It's quite early material going to come out of here. I'm sure you get the idea. You keep, keep on going until that goes in to require depth. I'll put the spindle or the mandrel back in there again, put some marking blue on and just make sure we are cutting the perfect tape but I don't see what else it can be. Right, I'm going to run the lathe at full speed. I'm going to use my drill to drive the cross slide and try for a... I don't want to finish that and get on a decent cut. I'm running at 2,000 RPM, it was very late for me. Put a good finish in there, really good finish. Feels nice. Put the smidge and the mark and blue on there. I 
it's basically touching all the way down quite happy with that needs to go deeper but not a great lot deeper I think I'll let it cool down and then I'll turn the tool round and use a new part of the tip a new corner of the tip and go for a finishing cut in the morning once the tape is done there's some threads to go on here I'll blend this in, I'll put an angle on there and that's a, more or less it finished That's going to be the last cut. A really good finish in there now. Marvin Blue on here. And that's pretty well all the way down. I think I'll settle for that. I'm tempted to go nail your fingers. I've run into a bit of a problem. I've broke through. I think it's broke through to the end of the keyway. I made it up and I knew there was plenty of material on to put this taper on, but I forgot about the keyhole. Or the keyway. There it is, a bastard. It's been a bane of my life, this, this keyway in here. Typically welding up all right, all's not lost, but it's certainly, this is fighting to the last, this. Well, I suppose at least on my channel, you see all it's like in the real in the real world. I could have just welded this up and said nothing. Right, so it's welded from the outside. I've also welded up the inside of the bottom of the hole. Now we can put it back on, carry on machining it. That's one thing about dropping yourself in the shade, it's nice when you can pull yourself out of it. But the world repairs were really nice, you can hardly see where it where it was, it was actually there. Now I've re machined the tape under a problem at all. The problem I've got now is when I put it back on, I've got run out on this end. Having run out here is a complete waste of time with a collar chuck. You should have to take this off, put it back on and have no run out at all. And the only explanation is the tape right in there must be a funny hair out so it's not tightening back up in the same place so basically it's no use for a it's no use for a collar chuck I can part the end off here and make another spinner protector and then I'll have to um, think again about the collar chuck possibly make a two part one because I have got a I've got a spare catch plate which I know the tape has right because it's it's made by Harrison and I may make the collar chuck to bolt onto that. It's annoying, but that's the way it is. It's, it's pointless carrying on. I'll run the lathe up and show you the run out on it. In a way, I'm pleased I actually broke through, otherwise, I wouldn't have taken it off. I would have had this, this, this screw cut and done. Being finished off, I would have put a test bar in. It would have run perfect. And then, once I took the chuck off and put it back in, it would run off or run out. See it there. It's only a couple of thousand run out, but it's enough to it's a total waste of time for what I'm what I'm trying to do. So I'm feeling it's back to the drone board with this one. So if anybody wants a spinning protector for the Harrison, 
send us an email and you can gladly have this bastard thing because I'm sick of the sight of it. Once again, as usual, it just remains to say thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and as always, a massive thanks for all the well wishes that are coming in towards my wife Dave and my dad. Thanks very much.